everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Ali, and this is my sweet, sweet little 14 month old baby, Alethea. We are in her playroom shooting today, and if you haven't seen her playroom tour, it's up, so I show everything that's in this room and all of her toys, and show off her amazing place to play. In today's video, I am sharing with you guys parenting styles I don't subscribe to. This can be things that I don't really agree with or maybe things that I just do a little bit differently. I was really looking forward to recording this video because personally, I love finding other moms out there, whether it be on Instagram or on YouTube that have helpful tips and different parenting strategies that I can try. The parenting styles that I'm sharing today were all things that I once didn't even think of. And because I have these sources on YouTube and Instagram and other moms that are kindly sharing their words of wisdom, it definitely made me a better parent. So today I am sharing some of those things with you in hopes that you can find some words of wisdom and maybe evaluate how you choose to parent your children. I think that parenting is definitely a full-time job and because it's a job, we should be always evaluating and reflecting on the job we're doing and always trying to improve and make little adjustments here and there because every single person in the world can be better in some ways. The first thing is something that I try to not say to my daughter. And it's something that I always tend to say to children. I worked in lots of like day home and daycare settings and I always catch myself saying this and I really try to pause and be like, okay, we could probably say that in a better way. And that is saying, if you were a big girl or if you were a big boy, you would do this. So for example, if you were a big girl, you would use the potty or if you were a big girl, you would clean up your mess. If you were a big girl, you could watch this movie, but you're too little. And I really find that that kind of language is very negative for children. I know when I was growing up, I always wanted to be older. I hated being a child and I always felt like if I was a little bit older, I could do more things, I could have more fun, I could have more freedom. So I really wanna to try to savor my daughter's age and her childhood and not ever make her feel like being older is better. I want her to love her age, appreciate her age. And older isn't better. Every single age and stage of your child's life is amazing and important and valuable and they should learn to embrace every single age and focus on the things they can do. The next thing is also something I try not to say. And again, I always do it and I just hate when I do it. And that is saying, oh, good girl or oh, good boy. I really don't like that language either because let's say your child does something really good, like they stack all the rings on here and you say, oh, good girl, you did that. It kind of implies that if they weren't able to do it, that they would be a bad girl or a bad boy. So I try to just say like, oh, good job, or you did amazing, or congratulations. In the, in the using the potty example, if they use the potty and you say good girl, it makes them feel like the times that maybe they have an accident or don't use the potty that they were bad. So no children I don't think are bad, even when children are having big feelings, I don't think children are ever bad. The next thing has to do with baby proofing. In my house, I have a lot of things that are baby proofed. Like I have a gate on the top of our stairs just in case she was to fall down the stairs for safety reasons. But there's also things in the house that I chose not to baby proof. Um, when it comes to like cupboards in the kitchen, uh, under the sink is a common place for people to hide all of their chemicals and soaps and stuff like that. And what I really encourage you guys to try is instead of having those things at their level where you have to baby proof it and lock it away and make it a no zone, make it a yes zone and don't have any child proofing on your drawers and make those drawers safe for your baby. So you can put Tupperware in there or pots and pans or you know, things that are like plastic bowls and safe for them. So make things like a safe zone for them and create more yes zones rather than no zones. When it comes to baby proofing my stairs, I do have gates on my stairs, like I said, but I allow Alethea to go up and down the stairs. So 
I taught her how to go up and she learned really quickly. As soon as I showed her and I helped her little feet walk up and climb the stairs, she caught on to that so quickly. Once she reached like a year old, we were able to teach her how to go down the stairs. And again, she caught on so quickly. She's very, very confident on the stairs and I'm very confident in her. I highly encourage you to like let your child explore the stairs and don't make it this like scary no zone, make it a yes zone. You can still do it safely. Like there's this quote I just I read or I heard from another YouTuber very recently. It says, let them do dangerous things safely. And I think that's an amazing quote to live by. The next thing has to do with messes. And this is again, something I really have to practice. Being a mom, especially to like these wee ones and toddlers, they're throwing crafts all over and making messes, throwing their food. I swear Alethea throws more of her food on the ground and all over herself rather than what gets in her belly. Some days I'm like, are you even eating anything? And it can be like a lot of work and it can be really frustrating to have to clean up a mess, like every meal, every snack, every craft. And it sometimes like discourages parents to even doing sensory experience or, or crafts with their child because it's just so messy. I highly encourage you to like try to let go of that need to keep a space clean create a space that your child can get messy in, can explore crafts and food and art is a sensory experience and a learning experience for them. And them getting messy is just a part of them being a child and you should just embrace that. Another reason why messes shouldn't be seen as a nuisance is because when your child is eating and they're playing with their food, that's a way for them to explore their food. So maybe they really hate things like broccoli, but you keep exposing them to broccoli. The first time they might just throw it on the floor. The next time you expose it, they might start to touch it and learn the texture. Then the next time they might tend to like eat a little bit and eventually they might be brave enough to take a whole bite and eat up all their broccoli. So it helps your child like learn the food, learn the texture, get used to the smell, and experience food in a non-scary, very safe way. The next thing may be kind of controversial, but it's that I don't believe in sharing. And when I say that, take it with a grain of salt, it doesn't mean that I never wanna teach my daughter how to share, or I think sharing is a negative thing in any way, but depending on your child's developmental age, should determine how much they need to share. So for example, if a child is playing independently with two animals, they have two animals and they're playing very good, they're playing independ independently and they're having great imaginational play. And another kid comes along and wants to play with one of them. If you give that to another child and then your child only has one, it kind of interrupts their play. They were playing really good with the two and now they only have one and it really like puts a halt in their play and they don't really know what to do anymore. So instead of like interrupting their play, I would let the child continue playing with the two and then after they're done playing with the two, then they can share with their friend or with their cousin or etc. When your child is really young, like one years old or two years old or three years old, they also don't really have the skills to know how to play good with another person. So if two two-year-olds were playing animals, they'd have a really hard time being able to like play together with each animal. Once they reach like six years old, they can definitely like, you know, play back and forth and talk between each other. But that's a little bit for like later on in their development and their play. I always say independent play is like a magical thing. So when your kid is playing independently with whatever they're playing with, I would definitely not go and interrupt that play. Just encourage them to play. And after they're done, they can learn how to share. Now, if there's like a bin of like tons of blocks and there's plenty to go around, of course, every child, every baby can definitely share between the blocks. And if someone is like hogging a toy and not really playing with it, but they're like, no, it's mine, but it's like behind them and they don't even really like want it. They're just being like a stinker. Then of course I'd be like, you're not using that right now. So it would be kind of you to share with so-and-so. So it all depends. So when I say no sharing, it definitely comes with like 
circumstances. Yeah. Another thing is that I don't like saying the word no. And it's not that I don't want my daughter to ever hear the word no. I think it's very healthy for her to hear the word no sometimes because they have to get used to that word. It's not a word you want to like completely avoid because then when someone finally tells them no, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, what did you say to me? But we can definitely, as parents, say things in a nicer way and take the time to give them an explanation why, right? It's Sometimes parents are just like, because I said so. No, because I said so. And I find like it's really disrespectful and not fair to the child. And we can take the time out of our day to go at their eye level and explain things. Kids are so smart. A one-year-old, like I have a one-year-old and she is way smarter than I thought before I had a one-year-old. I thought one-year-olds were just Ow. not there yet, but she's incredibly smart. Like you'd be surprised how smart and how quickly little tiny babies learn and how much they understand. So I definitely tell myself to take the time to explain to her why I don't want her to do something. And rather than saying the word no, because no can be a very harsh word, I try to say things a little bit kinder because that's how I would want her to talk to me. Like if Alethea didn't like something I was doing, I rather her be able to explain it to me rather than her just saying, no mom, no. So if I don't want her to say no to me, I probably shouldn't say no to her. Instead, I rather say something like, we're not gonna have another granola bar right now because we're gonna have supper soon. Rather than her being like, I want a granola bar and me being like, no, no, I don't wanna, right? We can choose to say things a little bit kinder and Often the word no is so harsh and it just like triggers something in your brain that people don't like. People don't like to hear the word no and neither do children. When you say no to a child, it just makes them automatically want to do whatever you said no to. So if you're like, no, don't touch that. They're like, what? No, don't touch this. Like, it's just like, not a great word and I find it doesn't really, it's not a very effective word. The next thing that I try to practice is I don't like to dumb down words or sentences for my daughter. Babies, again, they're so freaking smart. Like you would be so surprised like how smart and how much they understand. It's, it's incredible. So I never try to dumb down a word. And I just did this the other day. I was passing her her water cup and instead of saying water, I called it Wawa. And then I went, why am I calling it Wawa? Like, how? why should I determine the word that she should choose for water? She should try to learn how to say water properly. And if something else comes out of her mouth, then that's perfectly fine too. But I, as the mom, don't need to dumb down the word for her. She is a smart girl and she can learn and determine what kind of word she wants to use for water, whether it's water or whether it sounds completely different, but I don't need to make, a, make that decision for her. This also goes for like really complex topics. Like um, my fiance, Andy, he's totally that geeky, sciencey dad. And he'll always like say things to Alethea like, why is a rainbow this color? And he'll give her like the scientific answer. And I'm always like, she has no idea what you're saying. But I mean, why not start now with some like, <laughs> she has a bucket on her head. <laughs> Are you wearing a hat? You want mama to wear? Look, mama wear. Oh, mama wear. <laughs> mama wear the hat. Do you want to wear the hat? You want to wear the hat? Wear the hat. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Put on Alethea. Oh. <laughs> you have the hat now. Yeah, so why not start now with the sciencey stuff? Like why not? Like it does new it does no harm, right? Um so she has lots of like baby physic books and baby biology books. And even though she might not understand, by the time she's in high school, she'll be well prepared for biology and chemistry, thanks to Andy. <laughs> A 
another thing I do not subscribe I... to and I cannot stand is when parents are telling their kids not to do something and they do it themselves. So pretty much you have to be a good role model and a good example. Oh, peek boo <laughs> ah. Here, what's, what's over here? You have to be a good role model and a good example by your child. Your child likes to copy everything you do. Like you're the coolest person to them. So when a baby, for example, is biting you, I've known parents or I've seen parents bite back and they're like, no biting. It doesn't work, right? So that I do not agree with. I don't subscribe to or no hitting and then gives them a hit. No, thank you. I think practicing a more gentle approach to parenting is more beneficial for your child because they just like to copycat. And there we go. Those are some of the parenting styles I don't subscribe to and the good, healthy parenting strategies that I try to practice in my own home. I hope this gave you some helpful advice and maybe it made you reflect a bit on your parenting style and when, hmm, like, is that something that I agree with? Maybe it's something you don't agree with. I hope that you can take some of these things that you learned and try to implement them in your household. Even if you didn't take anything from this video, maybe it encouraged you to do some research and be intentional about your parenting. I think that is the key point of today's video is be intentional. All of your actions, all of the things you say to your child and the things you do with your child really have an effect on them. So it's very important to be intentional. So when you do something or when you choose a parenting strategy, just give it some thought. And where are you? There you are. <laughs> Yeah, just, just be thoughtful with your parenting and know that parenting is a job. And I mean, it's my first time being a mom, so I have tons to learn. And it's also Alethea's first time being a one-year-old, so she has a lot of learning to do too. So she has to be patient with me. I have to be patient with her. And we're in it for the long run and it's a journey. Yeah, childhood and motherhood is a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. Hi. So it's actually Easter today, so I don't know when this video will be posted, but happy Easter. And I'm sure everyone is with their families having a great time. And that's what we're about to do. We're about to head over to my mom's for a very yummy Easter supper. So we're super excited about that. So I'm gonna end off today's video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support. Please subscribe to our channel to help our growing channel and give this video a like if you found this video useful. Thank you guys so much. Bye.